In this round two of the 2022 Sinkfield Cup, we had two games which were boring and ended in draws, and three games which were very complicated and interesting, two of which were decisive. So those are the three games I'll be looking at. I'm not going to try to be comprehensive because there's so many variations that you could probably explore, but I'm just going to look at a few lines that I found that look interesting. So let's get started. In the game Caruana versus Dominguez, Caruana had the white pieces and we saw a Petrov defense. And I like the variation that white chose here, knight c3. This is what I like to play. It's, I think, the best hope for a win because you get an imbalanced position after knight takes c3. What we're going to do is we're going to castle on the queen side. And then with opposite sides castling, that's an imbalance. We can try to create some threats, maybe a pawn storm. So we have some normal looking moves here. C5, black is expanding on the queen side. A good plan. Queen A5 attacks A2. And then Fabiano plays A3. I'm not really sure why. That just gives black something extra to bite on here, this pawn. Uh, maybe, as we'll see, there's a possibility of bishop takes a3 with a sacrifice. I would have played king b1, and Stockfish likes this move too, so I don't know what's up with a3. But anyway, black expands with d5. He wants to get in c4. He's already thinking about maybe this is a potential. So Fabiano just shuts it down with c4. That's a good move, I think. Now this bishop is just shut down. It's not going to do anything. So we got queen a4 attacking this pawn, and Fabiano decides to play c3 and just solidify and just give up this pawn. You can try to defend with like queen to e2, but then b5, and this is looking pretty bad. So I think that's a good move. Also playable is c takes d5. And c4 looks kind of scary, but white does have a response. What would you play as white here? d6 is actually the best move here. And of course, if bishop takes d6, we're gonna take like this, and then we get the bishop on d6. That would favor white. So that's a playable variation, but this is definitely the safest option, c3. And then, you know, black gets the pawn, but these are doubled pawns, and his, his attack isn't really happening over here on the queen side. So bishop c2, and then queen to a6 g5 hitting the knight and then here knight to e5 okay so we're just getting some whites expanding here with f4 makes sense knight g3 rerouting to f5 rook goes to the center because it was attacked knight f5 and now what would you play here as white there's kind of a deep tactical sequence here which doesn't really lead to an advantage but maybe some of you saw it maybe some of you strong players bishop takes c5 is how it starts. Okay, so bishop takes c5, takes, bishop takes f5, here, queen to d5. Black is a piece up, but this bishop's hit and this f7 pawn is hit. So what are you doing about that? Black decides to save his bishop, and then we get f7, and then, okay, king's got to move, then, you know, ends up at the end of all this, ends up the exchange up, but white has an extra pawn and a very powerful knight. You know, this is looking like a threat. So what happens here? Rook to f8 attacks the queen. This is a mistake. The best move here would have been rook a to d8. You need to prevent the queen from coming in here. That's a much worse threat. You know, this is nothing to really worry about. King moves. You can give back the exchange. Actually, you don't even give back the exchange because you take that rook, okay? So, rook f8 is a big mistake, and Fabiato could have had a winning game with queen to d7. So let's look at that line, queen d7. The problem is knight f7 is coming with check, and then after that, rook e7 is coming, and this is a big problem. How are you going to defend here? Um, there's really not a whole lot for black to do. You could go b5, and then the knight checks, the king moves, we get the rook here, the queen comes over here to try to defend this pawn, but now we got f5, and the computer's saying just like give up the queen, start doing crazy stuff like that. So that would have been just a complete win, but white didn't, I, I don't know, it's surprising white didn't see that idea, and played queen to e4 instead. And here, rook a to d8 is played, and this is another mistake. Um, white is now threatening f5, and black can shut that down with queen to e6. That was the best move. 
we don't want this these pawns are, are moving ahead too quickly um, so white sees this one f5 now we got b5 from black and now knight to c6 we want to go to e7 the idea here is we want to play f6 and if g takes f6 we're going to immediately push with g6 but if the knight's still here then when this pawn is taken that knight will be under attack so we're just getting that knight out of danger getting ready to play f6 and we're rerouting to this e7 square rook c8 hits the knight okay and then knight to e7 and then the rook goes here and we have a mistake from white which throws away the win queen to h4 best was just f6 okay takes we're gonna go g6 and what are you doing if you try to come over here you know this we got this kind of stuff this is going to lead to well not checkmate but a huge a huge winning advantage for white you could try to do that but we're going to go g7 check you know what well, this actually leads to mate i believe yeah and two moves starting with queen g6 check so queen h4 the idea here is i guess maybe knight here knight g6 check is the threat and if black wasn't you know if black didn't do anything and allows this knight g6 check this kind of variation here would result in a win for white the king takes and then the queen comes up here with the extra pawn and the centralized queen white is dominating but black does have a move and black plays the best move queen to d6 centralizing his own queen so that now if white tries this knight g6 check stuff king moves takes we get this move here, same thing, except now the queen is a little more active. Black starts checking and throws in a bunch of checks, and then at the right time, black will take a pawn with check, and then recapture on f8, and this will just result in maybe a draw. White is still better here, according to the computer. So that was white's best option, probably best hope for a win. But here, white went with rook to e4. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that move does, but after rook d8, going here, and then the king just moves. Okay, so I guess he wanted to put his rook on d4 to attack the queen. This was his whole idea. But here, maybe he missed the fact that black can get away with something. What would you play here as black? Black's only way to avoid losing here is giving up the queen. So you get the knight, and then you get the two rooks for the queen. White takes here, you get this pawn here, and white just doesn't have enough to win here. The, the rooks can defend. And the game went on for, you know, 10 more moves or so, but white just couldn't win. So here's where the game ended. The players agreed to a draw. In the game Nepo versus Ferruja, we had a queen's pawn opening, which is all very normal until we get to this moment here where white plays this unusual queen to c2, sacrificing this d-pawn. Okay, so black had already taken on c4, and now white, you know, lets black take another pawn. Knight takes d4, queen takes d4, and now knight to d2. Okay, so we're targeting c4. And black doesn't have a good way to defend that pawn. You can't play b5 or else you're just going to lose the rook there. So black says, I think the best way to give this pawn back is to play c3, which is a good move. Now white is going to get these split pawns here. And black is a pawn up. But white is doing pretty good in development here. The queen's hit, so the queen moves. And now we got knight to e4. All right, knight takes, bishop takes. And you can see white's castled, black's not. Black decides to go bishop to d6, which is not the most accurate move. Better is bishop e7. On d6, the bishop is a little bit vulnerable. The point is, white's best strategy is going to be to play rook b1, targeting this pawn here, after which black's best defense is going to be c6. But that will make this bishop a little bit of a target after rook d1. That queen is kind of tied down to defending that bishop. There's also some lines where white can get in c4, c5, and hit that bishop. So it's just better to have the bishop on e7. But okay, bishop d6. It's not losing or anything. Rook b1. And now black maybe makes the best move here, f5. 
Um, Black needs to castle, he realizes that, and he can't castle right away because the queen and the bishop are lined up on that pawn. So this move comes with tempo. So after bishop g2, Black can safely castle. And now White plays bishop e3 with tempo on the queen. This may not be the most accurate move order. c4 might be a little bit better. Playing this move first, and then we're threatening bishop e3 followed by c5. Um, the point is, if you play this bishop e3 first, what happened in the game, queen to a5, c4, now black can counterattack with f4. The bishop sitting there on e3, uh, vulnerable to that counterattack by the pawn. If you had started with c4, you know, and then the queen moves, you can throw in this bishop d2, you can see this variation. The queen doesn't have a lot of squares to go to. If the queen goes to c5, we go bishop e3, queen moves, c5. By that playing that move order, then we're not giving black the chance to get that move in. You could play it right here, but this is losing. Pawn takes bishop, takes, and then you're going to take like this. White has a winning position in this line, so that's just an interesting move order. Bishop e3, queen a5 here, and then black does play this f4. Bishop d4 is played, stepping out of the way. Bishop e5, okay, queen b2, takes, takes. We got e5 hitting the queen, queen d5 check. Queen trade is on the board, bishop d5, and white gets the pawn on b7, so the material is equalized. And we get a bunch of exchanges here, and we end up with just a rook ending. Two rooks on the board, and you would think this would end up a draw, but black starts to play inaccurately here. He plays rook to b4. This is not the right move. It's better to take, take, and play something like e4. The problem with rook to b4 is that it allows this situation where white can take on e5, black takes like so, and then grabs this pawn. You can see here that black has three pawn islands and white only has two. There's these split pawns. So white has the better pawn structure. Even though it's not totally decisive, it is an advantage for white. So white attacks the pawn here. And then Ferruja defends with this move. And now the king starts getting involved. And here, Ferruja makes a fatal error. He plays king to f7. What's better here is something like rook e6. So let's look at king f7. This allows white to play a strong move. See if you can find it. f4 is the best move. So we're getting these pawns moving. That's white's first priority. And we're going to play king to f3, we can play e4. This is just a harmonious development of kings and pawns up the board. Now, if black had played something like rook e6 instead, targeting this e-pawn, which needs to be defended, if you play e3, okay, now the king can start coming towards the center. Now, f4 can't be played right away, or this pawn will fall. And then how do you defend that pawn? If you want to play f4, you got to put the king here, maybe here. It's a little bit slower for white. So this is much better for black. Black might be able to hold this position. But after king f7 and we get f4, king e7, e4, now this is just too much activity for the white king and pawns. And what happens is the king and pawns just march up the board and black can't really do a whole lot about it. Eventually, White gets his king up here, goes after that pawn, okay, we get this, and then the final series of moves, you get king f7, and black resigns, this pawn is moving forward, if you try to do this, well, you got this right here, check, the king cannot stay here and defend against this pawn moving up the board. So that resulted in a win for Nepo, that was a nice comeback after what happened yesterday with Carlson. In the game Neiman versus Mamajarov, we had an English opening, which was all pretty normal until this point, where Neiman plays this e4 move, which is very rare, but the computer actually thinks it's pretty good. Bishop to c5 is played, and this allows white the common opening trick. Knight takes e5, and after black recaptures, d4 forks the pieces, so white's going to get his piece back. Bishop b4 played, and this is a roughly equal position here. Knight takes e4, queen f3, Knight takes, pawn takes, bishop a5. Okay, bishop f4 played, castle. Now here, 
Neiman decides to castle queenside, which just looks crazy to me. Look at all this open space around the king. I definitely would have went for bishop e2 and castled kingside, but what do I know? I'm not a super grandmaster. Apparently, the king is relatively safe. Uh, the computer says this is about dead even. Queen e7 is played. Okay, king b2. I guess you don't want the queen coming in this way. Rook to b8. Okay, this is looking scary. Looking to push and open up the file towards the white king. Queen to e3 is played, hitting that pawn there, which black feels he needs to defend and plays b6. But b5 is actually playable right here, which maybe was rejected because a queen takes a7. You know, that hits the rook. But actually, black can sacrifice a piece here with bishop to a6 with a totally winning position. The queen takes, and then queen c5 apparently is the killer move. And this is a threat. Let's say, okay, you take another piece. We're going to get this check. King goes here. Well, you lost your queen. That's not working. Let's say you attack the queen. Queen takes like this. There's just a lot of lines in here, but the threats are just too much. The white king is too vulnerable. Uh, check. King moves, and then you got this bishop takes c3 check, which is a game ender. Um, let's say you go this way with the king. There's queen to e4. Um, hitting this b1 square. I guess, uh, I mean, there's probably a lot of variations to explore here, but black can totally get away with it. But it's not surprising that a human might not want to risk something like that as black. So b6, bishop d3, pointing at the king side. We got queen to e6 here, queen g3. Okay, so this pins the g pawn. Maybe at some point a bishop could land here. If that queen goes too far, we can go here. Um, but better would have been queen to e4, g6, and then this move. That apparently is the strongest variation. After queen to g3, we get the rook here, and the rook moves here. Okay, so b5 is played, c5 is played here. Um, if you play c takes b5, this is okay too, because as long as black doesn't open this file completely, we're going to be okay. a6 is fine. If black takes like this, you know, the file's still closed. We'll let him have the pawn back. And you can't really take with the rook or the bishop will take it. That's not going to lead anywhere good. So this is fine. c5. And then here, b4 is played. And c4 is white's response, which gives up an exchange. Because after b3, you really have to do something. You don't want the file to open completely. You need to take the pawn, and this allows black to take the rook. And then rook takes. So black is a bit better here, but the white king is pretty safe. White does have an extra pawn. So black wants to continue attacking with a5. This was not a good move, though. Strongest for black here was d6. With pressure on this pawn, which is pinned, uh, white can take like this, takes and black will just maybe maintain the pressure if white tries to break the pin with bishop d2 there's always moves like d5 or even just d takes e5 grabbing the pawn black has a nice position but a5 was played bishop d2 pointing towards the king side which won't be good if black ever tries these moves now and allows this pawn to be exchanged off but maybe better here was queen to h4 hitting this pawn so Let's say defends, now bishop d2. And if black ever plays queen e7, we'll just take, take, and take that pawn there. That's a little better than playing bishop d2 and allowing black to play queen e7, which he didn't play, he played bishop a6. But after queen to e7, you don't have queen h4, so you could go to h3. But after g6, this isn't quite as good. The queen isn't uh, helping control dark squares in this variation. If white tries to take this pawn here, queen takes c5, you know, hitting the bishop and hitting this pawn here. So anyway, black plays bishop to a6, looking to take on c4 maybe. This pawn's pinned, so this pawn doesn't have enough protection. Queen to h4, now threatening to take on h7, so g6 blocks that. And now we got queen to d4. Again, bishop takes a5 is met by queen to c6 and the bishop can go here but then queen to a4 hitting this pawn you know it's pinned if you try this now we can take here if the queen takes you're going to lose your queen like that 
So we don't want to take on a5. Instead, queen d4 is played, looking to play bishop c3, possibly forming a battery there towards the black king, rook to b7. And now white decides to take on a5. Queen c6 now can be met by the spectacular e6. And there's not a good way to block this battery here. White's just winning here, you know. Rook takes, we're going to go bishop c3, and then you try to block like that. We got this kind of thing. That queen is trapped, so we don't want to play that. Doubling up on this pawn is better, but we got b4. And black's best chance here is rook takes b4, which is what he played. If you try something else after king c3, black is just too passive here. These pieces, I mean, what are these pieces doing over here? This pawn is not going to be, he's not going to have another chance to capture that pawn, and all his activity is over here. So he wisely takes on b4 to try to create some threat to the white king, but it doesn't really work out. King c3, the rook goes back because it was attacked. Now bishop e4, queen goes here, anticipating that next move, bishop d5. Okay, so offers the trade of bishops, rook to b1. And here, black makes a fatal mistake. White was already better, but this just gives white the game. Plays bishop to a8. The best line would be bishop takes d5, being the first one to strike. White takes here, queen takes. Now, queen takes d5, now it's black's turn. But you can see by moving your bishop and allowing white to capture first, white kind of gains a tempo. Rook takes, queen takes, bishop takes, queen takes. Okay, all the pieces are off the board, now it's white's turn. So white can grab the pawn on d7. And black plays this queen a1 check, tries to get some activity but the white pawns are just too far advanced. The king goes here, and this is how the game ends with these pawns just marching forward. And black's pawns are just not quick enough. And this is where the game ends. The king's gonna go to c6 and you can try a check and the checks are starting to run out queen b5 and that is the end of the road for black so thanks for watching and stay tuned for round three